Not so much? Yeah. All right. All right, hi, everybody. Um, hi, all right, I like this crowd. So uh, the title of this talk is Fun User Experience is Serious Business, and so can you. Uh, and I'll explain that a little bit in a minute, because I'm guessing, how many of you are here just because you are curious about what on earth the title of this talk means? Yes. All right, we have some honest people in the crowd. Um, my name is Siko. I am a grant maker at the Wikimedia Foundation. This is Heather, she's a designer at the Wikimedia Foundation, and uh, this is Jake, and he is an English Wikipedian and a grantee. So, uh, what on earth does fun and serious business, and so can you mean? Uh, some things are serious, right? We do a lot of serious things every day in our work as volunteers or as staffers in some cases. Um, making grants, applying for grants, uh, teaching people how wikis work, writing an encyclopedia, those are like pretty serious activities, right? Uh, but, but we have this idea that making the experience of doing those serious things, uh, making that a fun activity actually helps us do it a little bit better. So then this general question, how can something be both fun and serious at the same time? We have a pretty well established word for this in our culture, and the word is play. So I want you to take a minute and just think about some time when you were a kid, when you played a game. It's one of those crazy kid games that you only did when you were little. Um, just think about what that, what that was for you, that unique game you played when you were younger. Uh, a, ga a game that you, sorry. What was a game that you played when you were a kid? Yeah, I'd yeah, love to hear some. Love to hear some examples, some stories. Well, we had the lava game, basically. The lava game. What else? Another game. Uh, we had Red Rover, which we played. giant refrigerator cardboard boxes and try to slide down the stairs in them? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we think, like, just, just thinking about sort of the, the feeling behind that, right? Like, like play is, is the way that, that we practice making things a little bit fun, right? Uh, <laughs> has arrived. Um, so we're, we're, we're playing with this idea a little bit in a few of the projects that we've been doing this past year. And so we thought we'd share a little bit with you about how we're bringing this into our practice online in some of our projects on Wiki. Um, so this project that, uh, that this slide is showing you is called Idea Lab. And Idea Lab is a space that we put up on MetaWiki um, that is, uh, is essentially for people to share ideas uh, that could eventually turn into grant proposals. So applying for a grant is one of those things that is pretty serious and it can feel um, a little bit scary, it can feel a little bit intimidating, right? You're sort of putting your idea out there and asking people to tell you if, um, if, if it should get funded. And so looking at this problem a little bit, we wanted to figure out what, um, what's a way to make that feel a little bit less intimidating and a little bit more fun. And our answer to this is Idea Lab. Uh, so you can see one of the ways that we've done this in Idea Lab is um, is played with design. Uh, so we've got Science Cat is kind of the theme. We've got a whole cat theme there. 
Um, so you've got tinfoil hat cat that is uh, encouraging you to sort of focus your, your ideas. Um, we're using a little bit of irreverent language as well as imagery. Um, and another piece of the puzzle with Idea Lab is breaking things into small bits, right? So one element of play is to not sort of take everything at once, um, but, but to just take a little chunk and play with it a little bit. So um, when you create an idea in the lab, what you're seeing over here on the right is uh, the info box for a new idea. Um, and we ask you to just give a little bit of information. You don't have to tell us sort of everything that you're going to do and how it's all going to work and what your budget should be and all of those sort of more serious questions. Um, but we ask you to just start with kind of the tasty little spark of, um, of what your project is really about and then build and play based on that. So we tried to take a similar playful approach with new editor onboarding. The, the way that we get people to become successful contributors starting out from totally from scratch. And if you talk to most new editors, um, especially the ones who don't make it, they describe their first editing experiences as frustrating, overwhelming, demoralizing, confusing. Um, and so I had spent hundreds of hours talking to new editors and answering their questions, and the same questions and obstacles kept coming up. Um, the same kind of pain points. And so I had this idea that what if we, instead of just having a, a place to ask questions when you hit a roadblock, if we introduced editors through a game, basically, uh, an interactive guided tour of what it means to be an editor. So I wrote this script called the Wikipedia Adventure. And basically, you're introduced to Wikipedia, and you get a message on your talk page from happens to be a simulated editor who invites you to edit a simulated article on Earth. And you go through seven missions, and you develop the skills that you need so that by the time you're done playing the game, you'll have a much better chance of having not just a productive and constructive you know, opportunity to contribute, but an enjoyable opportunity with far less frustration. Um, so we worked with playful language here. We wanted the game to guide you, not, not tell you what to do, but guide you, to invite you into the community. Um, and then we wanted to support this with design that was very different from uh, the Wikimedia interface. Um, that was playful, that was colorful. Um, there's some components of kind of standard game mechanics. You get badges when you earn certain skills. But generally, it's, it's about a very supportive and playful tone that's kind of mirrored in this colorful, um, we call it galactic carnival of humanity theme, um, which, which Heather fantastically designed. Uh, and so then the third project we're going to talk about is the Tea House. The Tea House is, um, is a project that we started uh, more than a year ago on English Wikipedia. It's a welcome and Q&A space for new editors. I'm not going to sort of go into the details of that. There's a lot of documentation up about that and we were at the community and talking about it last year. Uh, but this year we did a badges project around it and uh, Jake's going to talk a little bit about that. So one of the questions that any community asks is how can you encourage people to participate? Um, we've got one kind of, at least on English Wikipedia, kind of a gold standard way of doing that. You can get a barn star. Someone gives you this graphic token that says you did something really awesome. And I don't know how everyone feels about these, but I love when I get one of them. We wanted to take that barn star, that big achievement recognition, and try to break it down into more granular, uh, granular micro achievements. So again, we used a, a badges concept, and we thought, what are the behaviors that we want to encourage in the tea house? So this is primarily uh, a, new head, a new editor help space. So we want people to ask good questions and give good answers. We also wanted to cultivate a, an intentionally friendly and welcoming atmosphere. So we created a badge for fostering that spirit in the community. And we wanted some kind of meta badges, like if you had an idea to improve the tea house, we would try to give badges for that. Um, so again, you can see very not media wiki like badges. I mean, these are these are playful, they're fun, they kind of riffed on all different kinds of themes, and they're colorful, colorful and sparkly. Um, and so we gave them out to a couple hundred editors and started to collect a little bit of data to see. You know, what impact does it have if you reward people and recognize them for doing the things you want them to do in a fun way? 
All right, so then the question is, why does play matter, right? Um, is, are we just doing it because we like sparkly colors and being and thinking it's fun? Um, the answer to that is that sometimes you hit the enga engagement jackpot, right? So uh, the Tea House is kind of a nice example of this because it's a project that we've been running for more than a year. Um, and what we have found, we have Jonathan Morgan here in the audience who uh, has done a fair amount of, of analysis on this project. Um, and what we find is that Tea House new editors who are involved in the project um, are actually more engaged, right? They're editing more articles, um, there are more women participating, and they are staying around longer on English Wikipedia. Um, so this is kind of the serious business part of this, right? Is that um, although we're sort of playing with this and, and making it irreverent and fun, there is actually some serious impact. Now we get to the and so can you part of this talk, right? Because uh, we bet that lots of you are, are doing all sorts of interesting projects out there. Um, and we wanted to sort of turn the rest of this session into a discussion and see what kinds of fun projects you guys are working on. Um, so we've got a few questions here to sort of throw out to the crowd. We're also happy to take your questions, um, but let's just see if we can turn it into a conversation. Um, so a few questions that we have are, number one, why did fun get tagged as trivial? Um, you know, when did play become this thing that is just for kids, or um, is it something that maybe doesn't belong in an encyclopedia, et cetera, et cetera? Um, 
does anyone have a story out there of how you have made a serious activity fun? Um, whether it's in your communities or other projects that you're working on. Um, how are you helping people to play and what are you building? I feel very like, hello everyone. <laughs> Anybody got a story? I'm not sure I can make this analogy work, but um, I, I, I have a two month old, and when she has an enormous poop explosion, it's a serious problem. It makes her really sad, and you want, you want to get her out of it as soon as possible, obviously, but, um, but rather than rush through the process, I take my time. <laughs> Um, and I basically let her wiggling get herself out of the PJs and so on. And it seems to work really well. Um, whenever we change her, she giggles. So. Right, so rather than getting making the, this kind of quick, stressful experience. Yeah. That's, that's a very good, that's a good example. Wow. <laughs> I'm making an experience, taking the stress out of an experience. Right, because you have to do it anyway. Right. Yep. And that was part of one of the things you were talking about with fun is that there's no idea. Well, there's a, a cognitive, it takes brain power to do things, to answer questions or whatever it is, and I don't remember what the studies are, <laughs> but the idea was that fun actually um, refreshes that energy for you a little bit. Is fun the goal?
Um, but the spirit of this is to try experiments um, that are a little unconventional and to see maybe they do work.
it actually lets you try things a little bit, right? And it, and it takes some of the risk down a little bit. And I think we've seen that. Um, but but Jay can, uh, I think you should talk a little bit about the MIT. Yeah, so I, oh, have you seen this? Uh, so I spent, you know, the past two years basically working on this game and then proposed it as a grant six months ago and spent the six months building the game, refining the script, and almost ready to release to alpha testers. And I see, I get the notification that the whole project has been nominated for deletion. <laughs> and, and the sole deletion rationale was, this is targeting children. And so it... It was a really kind of, I think it was a teachable moment for me because it was a chance to challenge that core assumption. Yeah, who nominated it for deletion? <laughs> we know. Yes, we do. <laughs> we can check the MFP page. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, so this is uh, miscellaneous pages for deletion. Someone said we should get rid of this entire one. Because it is play and it is fun, and so clearly it must be targeting children. And, yeah, you know, it was interesting when I conceived of the game and discussed it with Heather, very much the target demographic was a diverse college-aged um, group. And I never made the assumption. I, you know, I've been reading about game design um, and the ways that it's used in education and uh, HR offices and onboarding. And I had never considered that something that was just fun or just a game was primarily or exclusively for children. I just, that's, it's kind of the hypothesis that I'm trying to test to show that that's not the case. That's an assumption our community brings. It's a traditional, a traditional assumption. Um, I think at the core of it though, it's a fear. And I think our best way to correct a fear is to demonstrate that what you were afraid of actually doesn't happen. Uh, what you were afraid of happening just the fear. And, and that's why we set up experiments and measure the outcomes. Yes. Which is what we'll do with this. You have to wrap up. Yeah. 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 Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much.